Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's so nice to meet you too. Well, even well, today is Halloween, so also say Happy Halloween. <laughs> okay, with the song uh, from the bass we sing 2168, we start our worship service.
Also, thank you for all people. Thank you for all people who have served and prayed for the community garden for this season. And keep your prayer. Keep your prayer for our, not only for the uh, community garden, but also uh, for all other uh, our church's uh, ministry. And church cleaning day on November 6th. Uh, before the church conference, so please commit your time and effort in the church work with joy and pleasure. And well, you know, the Mr. Abenaski, uh, one of our church's member, lovely, uh, having a well, lovely voice, uh, she has served our church uh, as a choir member. Uh, she moved to Binghamton last week uh, for her job. So she was so devoted her time and effort to our church church ministries. So please pray for her continuously. And yeah, you know, even though she moved to be moved to Wolfinghampton, but it's not far from here. So uh, she just told us that uh, told us that she could be she will be able to come to our church, but anytime she is available. And then also she uh, wanted. Uh, she wanted send, wanted to send her heart, her mind, to our lovely congregation. So, is there any other announcement? Yes. Uh, Harry. <laughs> yes, I do have an announcement. Uh, as you all know, this is a very important Sunday in the church calendar, uh, not just because it's Halloween. Um, we all know what today is, don't we? Yes. Today is. Pastor, Pastor, Pastor Appreciation Sunday. <laughs> I mean, it's not a surprise at the 1045. Yeah. It was a very <laughs> nice surprise at the 9 o'clock service. So. Yeah. But uh, we did, just, we did uh, present Pastor Bach with a little gift of our appreciation and thanks. And uh, as I said at the early service, um, in Genesis, God says that it's not good for man to be alone. I will make you a suitable helper. And I think we all know who that suitable helper is for that spot. <laughs> so, Jen, you don't have to come up forward this time. Unless you want to, you can. <laughs> so we also have a couple little things for, uh, for, for Jen. And we just want to say thank you. And on behalf of a very grateful congregation, we appreciate everything you've done for us since July. And uh, we just want you to know that. And just to keep in mind that every Sunday could be Pastor Appreciation Sunday. Um, on the way out, just because uh, pastors need encouragement too. So uh, just, uh, you know, don't be afraid to say thank you on the way out. So thank you again. Well, I've got I'd like to say something. Oh, yeah. Good news <laughs> in this place. So thank you for sharing. And well, actually, it's my pleasure. It's my pleasure and it's my honor to be with you in this beautiful church, beautiful community, with uh, uh, within our community. So I always appreciate your welcoming and your commitments to the whole uh, church's ministry. So thank you for letting me join you. <laughs> the the Milford UMCS ministry and this lovely community. Thank you. Let's join the court to worship. We are people of God created to love. We will love the Lord our God with our heart, soul, mind, and strength. We are people of God determined to love. We will love our We love neither from a sense of obligation nor to gain popularity or favor. We choose to love both the lovely and the unlovable because love imitates God's nature. 
For, whole, for the whole law is summed up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Our first hymn is from the United Methodist Kingdom, 368. Today's article is from Psalm 146 on page 
whose soul is in the Lord, their God who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps space forever, who is accused of his oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. Before I launch into the scriptures, I'd like to mention a little tradition that we had in Hartwick that Betty Durr introduced. Some of you may remember her. Uh, she'd have a story or a, a, a scriptural funny or something like that. Uh, and we, you know, continued that for, for a long time. So, did this, I have a story, and it is true. Um, my mother was born in Iowa, and the right and her, her father, um, my grandfather Charlie Nash, um, was both a, a diversified farmer and an and, um, ordained minister within the Methodist Episcopal Church. And he and my mother were traveling on a Sunday someplace. And this was like 1929 before the big crash. And um, they wanted to stop at a for a worship service, wherever they, you know, where they were driving, and they drove to a, an African Methodist Episcopal Church, and they were, you know, warmly greeted. And it came time for the offering, and this supports our, our concept of stewardship. It came time for the offering, and the minister says, "Now that it is written that the Lord loves the cheerful giver." So I expect you to be cheerful. And the officers went around with plates and passed them around. And brought it forward. The minister looked at it and frowned. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I think some of us could be a little more cheerful. Let's try this again. <laughs> Which they did. And, you know, he brought forth the harvest and he gave it to the minister. And he says, we have to redefine cheerful here. <laughs> and so my grandfather, he nodded to the ushers to go forth in the place. And my grandfather said to my mother, I don't think we're ever going to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> so he reached down and took his wallet, five dollars paper money, put it in the offering plate, and we brought the plates to, to the front of the church. The minister looked at it and says, I see we are more cheerful. And I am grateful, and the Lord is grateful, particularly with particular gratitude to the distinguished white gentleman in his crisp five-dollar bill. 
true story. <laughs> Ruth, chapter 1, verses 15 through 18. Look, said Naomi, your sister-in-law is going back to her people and her gods to go back with her. But Ruth replied, don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go, and where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people, and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, even if death separates you and me. When Naomi realized that Ruth was determined to go with her, she stopped urging her. And that has been the Lord's Old Testament reading. Our New Testament reading this morning is from the book of Hebrews. Chapter 9, verses 11 to 14. But when Christ came as high priest of the good things that are now already here, he went through the greater and more perfect tabernacle that is not made with human hands. That is to say, is not part of this creation. He did not enter by means of the blood of goats and calves, but he entered by the most holy place once for all by his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. The blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of a heifer sprinkled on those who are ceremonially unclean sanctify them so that they are outwardly clean. How much more then will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse our conscience from acts that lead to death, so that we may serve the living God? This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Thank you. Um, that's the from the face we see, 2108. One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating, noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer. He asked him, of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one, the important one answered Jesus is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Well said, teacher, the man replied, you are right in saying that God is one, and there is no other but him. To love him with all your heart, and with all your understanding, and with, with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself is more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. And from then on, no one dared ask him any more questions. This has been the reading of the Lord's Gospel. Thanks be to God. So, not only the children, but also the 
many people say Happy Halloween. <laughs> Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. <laughs> so Halloween is the one of the biggest events in the United States. Don't you think so? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I still remember being surprised to see so many houses decorated for Halloween the first year I came to the United States. So, the most of houses, the most of family decorated their houses with a spider web and well, the ghosts, witches, well, skeletons, <laughs> tombs. <laughs> lot of decorations in their house even though well even though we are always well, cleaning up the spider web in our church cleaning day <laughs> they just make spider web in their house <laughs> it was so surprising well while children may not be able to run around the houses as freely as they used to but shouting the treat or treat Children as well as adults enjoy Halloween in various ways. Well, in South Korea, on Halloween day, on certain street, uh, people put on various costumes and they march on the street on Halloween day. By the way, do you know the origin and meaning of Halloween day? Do you know the Halloween, what does it mean? Yeah, hello. We mean is the well, the shortened version of the word evening. So hallows evening. So knowing the origin and meaning of something is very important in understanding it correctly and enjoying it abundantly. Although the exact origin of Halloween is not known, but it is generally believed that Halloween originated from the Celtic festival. In Ireland and other northern European countries, it was said that November 1st, when the autumn harvest ended and the winter came, was regarded as the beginning of the year, new year, because of the long winter. So, like Midbrook. <laughs> Of course, we used the calendar that well, the new year started from the January 1st, but the, just according to the weather, it could be regarded as that the November 1st is the, well, the beginning of the winter. Like that, the island and the many well, northern uh, European countries regard that November 1st is the beginning of the new year. Well, very, very past the year. <laughs> well, Celtic culture believed that during the transition from October 1st to November 1st, the boundary between the living and death, boundary between the life and death blurs because the years change. So, allowing the souls of the dead to come to the land of the living to take over the bodies of people and cause accident. <laughs> they, they just lived there at the time. So people tried to protect themselves by wearing costumes made of animal skulls and skins, trying to tell each other their luck. So, they just looked like a wall, the soul of the dead by through the costume of the animals' skulls and the skins. So to protect themselves from the soul of the dead. Over time, costumes made of animal skulls and skins have changed into various costumes that imitate ghosts, witches, and now it has become it has become established in the current culture as a festival where various costumes are enjoyed and candy is distributed to children. So, 
Uh, at 9 a.m. service, I show various costumes currently to our children that so children as well as many others wear the costumes like not only ghosts, witches, mummies, vampires, but also well, Spider-Man, <laughs> the Frozen, you know, the Minecraft, the game they play, the, the kids play. So there are a lot of costumes in Halloween. But what does it mean to know the origin of Halloween for us? Why we sh why should we know the origin of Halloween as well as the origin of something around us? Of course, what we know the origin of the Halloween does not change the form or manner of the Halloween festival. It means that whether we know the origin of Halloween or not, the people, including us, play the same things in every Halloween and well, wear the costumes in every year and give candies and chocolate to all children in every Halloween. Nothing changed. But why we should, why should we know the origin of Halloween and origin and essence of something around us. Well, I talked about the orig original meaning of Halloween because knowing the original meaning of something means to understand its essence, its core, and it can help us apply it in our lives. For example, when I was in my home country, South Korea, some churches had very negative comments or opinions about Halloween festival. The reason was that the superstitious tendencies of Halloween damaged the Christian spirit. Because the people cost, people wear the costumes of ghosts. Well, something about the superstitious the things. Though so some churches did not like the people to well, wear the costumes in Halloween. So, what do you think of it? What do you think about this? Well, of course, not all churches, not all churches do not do not like well, the Halloween. Some churches more well celebrate Halloween with their congregation, but you know. Everywhere, there are, there are groups who have a positive opinion and the other group has a negative opinions. You might think so uh, if you just look at the form and manner of the Halloween well, days, it is possible to think that the Halloween just damages the Christian spirit, just looking at the well, forms or the ways of the Halloween festival. However, the original meaning of Halloween is that it is a festival to give thanks for having passed a year safely and to welcome the new year in good health. It is the same as we say Happy New Year in every January 1st. <laughs> so, is there anybody who come to the mountain to celebrate the new year in every well in well on December 31st. Mm -hmm. Have you gone to Mountain? All oh, just to see the video that the people say just count down 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, Happy New Year! <laughs> yeah. I have not gone to one mountain to see that, but I have seen some video that people celebrate the new year. Same thing. Happy Halloween is to celebrate that, yeah, we safely passed a year and then we also welcome the new year in good health. 
So, how can today's word of God be connected with understanding the essence of something well and integrating, integrating it into our lives? It's really hard for me. I've been thinking a lot about this. Think about it. I explained, I said a lot of things about the original meaning of Halloween. Then today's Gospel reading is the story that the one of the teachers of teachers teachers of law communicated with Jesus, had, had a conversation with Jesus that of all commandment, which is the most important. And then Jesus said, love your God and love your neighbor. How to make a connection with these two stories. The original meaning of Halloween and the conversation between the one of the teachers of law and Jesus Christ. I have been uh, thinking a lot of this. So, the gospel, the scripture of the gospel from Mark is very well known to us. Yeah. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than this. But to understand this well, we first need to look at the previous part of today's scripture. The scripture of Mark chapter 12 verses 13 to 27 says the contents of the Pharisees, members of the Herodians, and the Sadducees who came to Jesus and tried to find fault with him. So they tested Jesus. Of course. Jesus answered very, very wisely to them. They were the people who saw, heard, sought, and studied the Word of God more than any, anyone at the time. But they used their knowledge to test Jesus, not to practice it through their lives. They had a lot of knowledge about the law. You know, in Jewish tradition, well, of course, it's not possible to how many commandments in their tradition, but some scholars said that there are more than 600 commandments in Jewish tradition in, from the Old Testament. And then these people, Sadducees, Pharisees, the teacher of the law, remember all these commandments in their head. How smart are they? How smart they are? But they did not use their knowledge to practice these commandments in their lives, but they used their knowledge to test someone and blame someone. And they used their knowledge to exert themselves. They did not know what the word of God they knew was talking about or what the numerous laws they had kept in their lives were saying. To them, the law was merely an indicator that they were living a more holy and blameless life than others. This is why they could not realize the meaning of the law in their lives even though they knew what the Word of God says. In Matthew chapter 15, verse 8, Jesus said to people who did, who did these behaviors, These people honored me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. However, in today's scripture, there was a teacher of the law who asked the core, the essence of Jesus' teaching. He asked simply, Of all the commandments, which is the most important? He looked at the laws and teachings of Jesus 
from a different perspective than those who mainly use their love, their knowledge to test Jesus and blame Jesus. And then he at once questioned Jesus about the essence of all the commandments he knew. So Jesus answered his questions clearly. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than this. Jesus was Jesus saw wisdom from this teacher of the law. What wisdom did he have? What 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 wisdom did, did, did this teacher this teacher have? Is, is it wisdom to understand Jesus' teachings at once? Well, it, was, it is possible. It may be possible. But I believe, that, I believe that the first question he asked Jesus of all the commandments, which is the most important, it is the wisdom that this teacher showed to Jesus and to us. While keeping and practicing numerous laws in his life, he wanted to know the essential meaning of the laws. He did not want to use his knowledge to blame and test someone. Rather, he wanted to use his knowledge to practice these commandments in his life. He did. He did that. But he did not know the essential meaning of these old commandments. Lot of commandments. So, what is the essence of these laws? Then, this teacher asked to Jesus the essence of the commandment, essence of the law. We also witness the person who set herself correct from the scripture of today's Old Testament. Luz had a choice. Although she lost her husband, she was still young and was able to return to her homeland and make a new beginning for her. But she came to know God and saw her own essence as a creature of God. Before knowing God, she just believed a lot of gods in her homeland, but as becoming as coming to know God, she finally recognized that God is only one Lord, and then God created her. This is why she confessed that it was not right to return to the gospel of her homeland, and belonging to God is to set her right. So he decided to follow Naomi to believe God in Israel. We have experienced and will continue to experience many trials and errors in seeing the essence of things around us and recognizing our own essence. We are, yeah. I think that someone do not agree with this, but we are so stupid. <laughs> we are so stupid that it is very difficult to grasp all essences of surroundings and apply them to our lives. We many times lost to recognize the essence of something around us. We Tended, we tend to see some the appearance of something rather than to see the essence of something around us. Nevertheless, we are still striving to think and learn about the essence of life, the essence of our faith, and the essence of our 
essence of the culture around us through the Word of God. Through these processes, we live and embrace the many differences around us. Our faith is not to test anyone, nor to exert ourselves. Our, the essence of our faith, the essence of our faith is not to blame someone and lift ourselves to the highest place. But our, the essence of our faith, the essence of our life is to love our Lord God with all our heart, with all our understanding, and with all our strength, and to love our neighbor as, our, as ourselves. This is where, this is the place where our life begins, our faith begins. Everyone is going through different things in different situations, and will go through them. I cannot know what happened to you and what will happen to you because we have all different backgrounds and situations. But I bless all of you to be able to ask this question to the Lord every time in every situation of you. What is the essence we need to find in our situation? One of the teachers of the law asked Jesus, Of all commandments, which is the most important? That is the essence to practice the commandment in his life. He sh should be known, he should know the essence, essential meaning of the law that he kept throughout his life to practice them in his life. Now, we have different things, we have different things that around us and we should ask God then what is the essence we need to find in our own situation Amen Let's pray for our prayer litany What gifts do we have to bring to the Lord? First Come into God's presence with humility and peace. What service can we bring to God? Come, Come rejoicing and praising God for all that God has done for you. How shall we witness to these mighty acts of God? Let your love that abides deep in your heart, the love that God has placed there, be a beacon for others who feel as though darkness has enveloped them. How shall I praise my God? With all that you have and all that you are. Praise be to God who has blessed me and all of us in such mighty ways. Praise be to God who continually blesses our lives and calls to each of us to be a blessing for others. Bach and Jen, Corey Perot, Linda Jubro, Stephanie Bomar, Michelle Evanitsky, Bob and Glenda Moore, Jane Allen, Ruth Martin, Cindy Seward, Jerry Gage, Liz Sellers, Richard Himes, Bill Triol, Debbie Kaiser, Paul Dubril, Dubril, Chris West, Karen Siddeley, Roger Scanlon, Cheryl Madison, Tammy Eldred, Ted Fury, Todd Whaley, Alyssa Christman, Melody Ainsworth, the family of Coda Flood, and the family of Betty Coyne. And let's join in the prayer of our Savior Thomas, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come.
team is from the United Master of Hitler 585. Thank you. 